What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to part three of my series. Today, we're gonna find out if a Canadian can pass the American citizenship test. I don't think I'm gonna do too good, but this test, like all the tests I'm doing for this series, is gonna consist of 20 multiple choice questions. I have the test right in front of me right now, so let's just get right into it. Okay, so I have the test right here. It looks like it is the civics practice test. I think that might be what it's called in the United States. But question one, what are two cabinet level positions? I'm going to do so bad with this test. I already know right now. Uh, the options are Secretary of State and Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Health and Human Services, and Secretary of Navy, Secretary of the, Inter of the Interior, and Secretary of History, or Secretary of Wealth and Secretary of Energy? I think Secretary of State is an actual thing. I'm not sure about Secretary of Labor, but I'm going to choose that one just based on I have no freaking clue and all the other ones don't sound right, but I bet you I'm wrong. So I think this one will tell me right away. Yes, I was right. So not too bad. I only knew one. So uh, let's try this one here. Who was president during World War I? Um, Theodore Roosevelt. I'm going to say him because that rings a bell for World War I. No. Woodrow Wilson. Okay. What are two parts of the U.S. Congress? I'm going to do so bad with this. The Senate and Courts, the Senate and House of Representatives, the House of Lords and the House of Commons, or the House of Representatives and the Courts. I'm going to say Senate and House of Representatives. Hey, okay. Not too bad then. Uh, why do some states have more representatives than others? I want to say because they have a larger population. Uh, let me check to see what the options are. Because the state's location, um, seniority, state's population, or the size of the state. Oh, it could be the size of the state too, right? I'm going to say population. Yes. Under, close that. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the states. What is one power of the states? Um, this one seems easy. I'm just going to... I think it is very similar to Canada with this one, where how we deal with our provinces and what they are in charge of. So make treaties, no. Create an army, no. Provide schooling and education or coin and print money. It's going to be uh, schooling and education. That one was easy for me. Uh, what do we call the first 10 amendments of the Constitution? No idea. Uh, the Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, Rights, Bill of Rights. I'm going to say Independence. No, it was Bill of Rights. I told you I'm going to do terrible with this. Four for two right now, but that's likely going to change. Name the U.S. war between North and South. That was the Civil War. I like uh, war history, so that actually helped me there. Uh, under our Constitution, some powers belong to the federal government. What is one of the federal? What is one power of the federal government? So I believe it's like over here. Federal means in charge of the entire country, and what power do they have? I'm gonna say declare war. Yeah, same same as Canada, pretty much when it comes to what part of the country is in charge of what or what government part of the country. I, I, it made sense in my head. What did the Declaration of Independence do? Declare our independence from Great Britain. Give women the right to vote. Declare independence from France. Free the slaves. I'm going to say Britain. Okay, I'm doing better than I thought. Um, I'm positive right now. It's probably going to get harder though. If both the president and vice president can no longer serve, who becomes president, speaker of the house, Secretary of State, President Pro Tempore, or Secretary of Treasury? I'm going to say Speaker of the House. Got that right. I was going to say Secretary of State, but that didn't sound right to me. Name one branch or part of the government. State government, Parliament, United Nations, Congress. 
one branch or part of the government so that maybe there's multiple ones that are right in this question. I'm going to say state of government. That was wrong. It was Congress. Okay, now that I see it, yes, that does make sense. In what month do we vote for president? I'm going to say November just based on 2016 elections, which were all over the news everywhere. I live in Canada and it was the highly... Uh, the biggest news topic, basically, of 2016. And the election happened in November. Yes. Who makes federal laws? The states, the Supreme Court, the President, Congress. Uh, I'm going to say... I'm going to say the Supreme Court. Who makes the laws? I want to say the Supreme Court. Congress. See, I was thinking the states. Oh, federal laws. Ah, oh, you should have known that. What does a U.S. Senator represent? Only the people of the state who's voted in, all the people of the state. What? Only the people of the state who voted him in. Only the people of the state who belong to the seniors' political pro 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 party. Holy stutter much. Uh, the legis... Let's just... I'm going to say... The state that voted him. I read the question. I think I corrected it when I was reading it. I was like, oh no, it means this. But whenever I chose my answer, I thought the complete opposite. I thought it meant he represents the people of the state that voted him in. So that's why I chose that. But it's the, the one I selected was actually the people who voted for him. So that, of course, is wrong. What is one reason colonists came to America for the traveling across for the experience traveling across the ocean? I doubt it. To join a civic group, freedom, or none of these answers. Um, I want to say freedom, but does that include discovering new land? Okay. What did? Emancipation Proclamation do. Give women the right to vote. Ended World War I. Freed slaves in the southern states. Uh, or give the United States independence from Great Britain. I'm going to say that one. Okay, I had no idea what it was. I couldn't even pronounce it. So, Who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? I was going to say that's Roosevelt, but I think Roosevelt was, if he wasn't World War I, I think he was before that, maybe the War of 1812. I'm just guessing. Don't judge me. I have no clue. We weren't taught this. I should know more about the wars, though, because I love war history. But I don't know who the other ones are, so I'm going to say uh, Hoover. It was Roosevelt. God damn it. If I would have just went with my gut instincts, I thought... I thought he was World War One. I. I thought he was in charge of World War One. So when he, I chose that for World War One, and I got that wrong. I guess I should have chose it for World War Two because it was an option. What is the highest court in the United States? Same as Canada Supreme Court. How many amendments does the Constitution have? Twenty-seven, twenty-one, ten, or twenty-three? I'm gonna say ten. Twenty-seven. I don't know what amendments means. Does that mean like changes? It's my opinion. It should have been low. Um, last question here. We elect a president for how many years? This is easy because it's the same as Canada. So four. Correct. Review of the results. That's not too bad. I got 60%. I got 12 out of 20 questions right. I did better than I thought. I know some of the ones I got wrong. The Roosevelt one, I really should have chose him for World War II because after I seen that it was correct, it does make sense now. I was just not even thinking for those ones. And some of the other ones, I just kind of chose the wrong one by accident. So, you know, 60% is way better than what I expected. I expected to get way lower than that. I didn't expect to do too good, but the fact that there was some... His, uh, war history questions, even though I didn't get some of them right. And some of the specifics on Canada and the United States, uh, whenever it says about the government, who's, which part of the government is in, in control of what, it's pretty much the same as over here in Canada, though. Like, that's, that's the alarming 
thing with me. It was very similar to how Canada runs the country. So those questions were easy as well, but 60%, I'm going to say that's okay. I didn't pass because if it's like the Canadian one, you need to get 75%. So I definitely would not be able to be an American citizen right now. But then again, I didn't practice for this test at all. I didn't know any of the answers. I didn't expect to have these answers. So there were these questions. So I didn't know anything going into it. I'm going into it blind. So to get 60% going in blind without doing any kind of practice or anything like that. I think that is really good. I am going to leave this video here. Hope you guys did enjoy. Um, I think there there is going to be a part four. It's going to be Jack taking the uh, Canadian citizenship test, which we've already recorded, and the results are going to be a little bit alarming. I hope you guys enjoy that video. I hope you guys enjoyed this entire series, but I will leave this video here. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.